ladies and gentlemen, we're in the uh, paddock uh, for this year's Brooklyn's Relived. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to Julian with this fine Aston Martin that we've got here. Um, so I'll pass straight over to him. We can learn a little bit more about this beautiful car. This is a 1936 speed model. It was um, re raced at, at Brooklyn's in 1938, and it was also in the Belgian Grand Prix in 1948, and it was raced by Jack Fairman and Richard Stalibras. Richard Stalibras turned the car over into a potato field at Spa and um, was killed in the car. Um, it was also owned after that by Nick Mason, the um, drummer in Pink Floyd, and, um, and I bought the car about 25 years ago without the engine in it and rebuilt the engine and here it is today. Um, I was also admiring when we were chatting off camera about the garlands that you two are wearing uh, which are a bit of a strange thing to wear on a day like today. Well, we went, well we went to a, a Beach Boys oh, wow. retro thing in Lyme Regis last night, so uh, hence the garlands. Wonderful. You didn't get blown away then? <laughs> no, we did nearly. Yeah, very windy down there. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for bringing the car along and enjoy the rest of the day, you two. Thank, thank you well, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This one has a pile of bits since 1979. I had MGs before that and post that as well. My first car ever when I was 17 was a J2, so it's the only one I've ever hung on to. Not the first car, but not one of that model. So that's that one. I have other cars as well. And it likes coming up here except for the Surrey roads, which are pure rubbish with all the potholes. I was going to say, there's lots of potholes around yeah, here, isn't there? Went from side to side. So, do you, do you come to many uh, meetings like this with your vehicle? You, you, yes. You, you attend many. Yeah. yeah. So, h sorry, how many did you say you had? Down to four. Four. Yeah. Are they are they quite costly to, to run? Not at all. Keep on top of it and uh, don't overspend the money. So, would you say that you collect your cars for for pleasure or for? Uh, I enjoy working on them. Renovating them totally at one time, I don't know, I just keep them going. And uh, enjoy getting out in the half decent weather and uh, enjoying it, meeting like minded people, people like yourself. I mean, so. Thank you very Would much. Like over or... <laughs> I know, I'm trying, I'm kind of smart casual today. I'm not, yeah. nobody's asking me to fix any planes today, so <laughs> I Just feel. Well, I won't crash then. Oh, if you had a choice, would you travel to Europe via plane or car? Depending on how far you're going, the car. Why do you say that, sir? Because you invariably are going off on convoy, uh, three or four of you, and have chats all the way down, meet decent meals, company, 
help each other out. Someone will take one spare, someone will take another spare. So you assemble and keep each other going, should you have to. But a lot of them are fairly reliable anyway. It feels like a proper team effort. It is a team effort. A bit like you getting your airplanes on. I'm glad you said that, because people are saying, how could you do that on your own? Because I want to fly to Australia. Why? Yeah. And, and people say, how can you do that on your own? And say, I'm not doing that on my own. I'm doing it with your plane. With you my, talk to it. With my plane. And you talk to it. But also with the people that help me, you know. I can't I couldn't do it without Jack support. Oh, um, do you have a like a linchpin person that helps you with everything? Yes, it's called me. <laughs> Mr. Self Reliant. Well, they're, they're all there about, so anyway. They should put your face on cans of oil, you know. Put, Rely on me. That, that'll put off the people, would it, for buying them? I'll put a blindfold on, it'll be alright. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking to me, sir. Your coffee's not terribly cold, I do apologize. I saw it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the two hooligans who turned up a little late to the party. One is the overgrown schoolboy, Alan Wynn, who used to be the director here. Now, back with his favourite toy, the Napier Railton. This is the fastest car that's ever been That is a Napier Lion engine in the leading half. 24 litres, 500 brake horsepower in up to the yard for... All cylinder engine, you'll see three
about this lovely curve here. <laughs> how, how, how do they manufacture a car like okay. this? Do you know anything so, about it? So this it? would have came into uh, England in 1936 uh, and it would have came in as a chassis and some of the body parts would come with it and then it would have been sent, someone would have ordered it and sent it to the coach builder and said I want this body built on this car. So it was all custom built. So the wings, they might have extended the wings and welded some bits in. Uh, Aluminium doors uh, and, and lots of everything is unique to this car. So there's one car, there's one car. One of a kind. A drive in it, how does it feel? It drives good, it's got a big straight eight engine in it and it, it goes along like anything you've got to be a bit wary of the brakes. So 
As a gentleman um, has mentioned potholes, do you have trouble with potholes in this vehicle? Not too bad. This is a little bit bigger than some of the other cars, so I think. So this is a big, big American car. They've done everything bigger than everyone else. They do, don't they, those Americans? They've got big ideas. Um, but they get it from us, what can, what can I say? Uh, it, it's very big. Um, how do you accommodate it in your life in general? I'm, I'm lucky I've got lots of big garages and I, if I need a bit more I build another garage. So I've got lots of these cars and I kind of, uh, it's, it's what I kind of look like. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, it is, it's, you could live in this car. <laughs> it's huge. So do you, do you use it generally like in everyday life? No, I come to Brooklands and, and uh, quite a bit uh, and I go to a few other shows and uh, it might go to America someday because the Americans kind of like this car. Uh, very unusual. Tell, now, I don't often get the, the chance to ask this kind of question. I'm sorry if it's a bit personal, but is there something a bit... Like, look at me about this car. Like, when you're driving along, might, do you enjoy that? Some, some people might think that. Um, uh, people look at it. it, it it's, it's quite special. It's nice, though, isn't it, when people do? It's quite special. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky it's in, like, a few special cars, so I've got a few of these. Uh, where did you, sorry, where did you acquire this one from? So if you've already told me that. Stains. Oh, right. Stains. So That's nice and romantic. <laughs> Just down the road. So it, it, <laughs> it has not come far, then? It has come far, and it, it used to live life until about 2007 with one family. Uh, so it was one family. All in the car. All in the car uh, and I tracked the, the original daughter of the granddad who owned the car type of thing back and she lives in Australia, uh, America now sorry and she sent me some original photos over the car. Uh, it's very, uh, and it was at the 1936 Olympic <laughs> car show at Olympia. So, just to sum up then, sir, I won't keep you much longer. How would you describe your your hobby? Is, would you say it was a hobby? That's what so, uh, how would you describe your passion? I'm sad. I, I'm a pre-war person that's kind of uh, uh, strange, most probably, because we all are a bit strange. Uh, and I just, I, I work on these cars, so I like working on my cars, and I've got a few. I've got a little Chevy truck I'm doing at the moment, which I like that type of thing as well, so I've got a mixed interest. What advice would you give to someone as a budding car collector? What would I give them advice? Uh, go and do what they like to do and, and then get a feel of what cars they like. I had a little Austin 7 and I sold that to a, a young chap and uh, I was pleased that someone got into it that's a bit younger than me because uh, everyone's dying around us now with these cars which is sad. Really. I noticed some Austins over, over there so I'm going to have a look. I think that's more my size, but I can more manage that one, but I'm, I'm working up to these ones. Thank you so much for talking to me. See you. Bye.